Yep, good sized fish too. That'd be nice if it's a walleye. This is for wherever this fish is, it just hammered it. Be a walleye. It sure is. We're walleye fishing, folks. There we go. Look at that. When I jigged it off the bottom, that fish just hammered it. And that is a perfect eating fish. Like, look at that. That is an absolute perfect eating fish. Ho, ho, ho. Settle down there, buddy. That's probably a 15 and a half, 15 incher. There we go. Uh, sweet. Alright guys, so I'm doing a catch and cook video for you guys today. Um, don't mind my apartment. It's not the neatest, but what do you expect from a outdoorsy guy? Um, so anyway, I'm just going to clean a crappie and a walleye for you the way I do it. And then we're just going to gonna deep fry them. I'm going to deep fry them in two different batters actually that I really like. So, here's a crappie. You know, this is a, this is a good eating crappie right here. Um, probably 10 inches long or so. But... I start by making an incision right behind the fin up to the head here. Run that knife right down the back to about the bottom of the fin here, right at the back side. Then, I, and I've done this a million times, I run it right down to where the rib cage starts, and then I just angle up the rib, rib cage just a little bit. You just want to keep that knife right against the rib cage. Okay. I'm only going to do one side just to keep this kind of brief, but there's my fillet. I actually have a skins it machine that I use now, but you don't have to obviously. Get that fillet off there. And if you get a good fillet, you can actually you see that there. You know, I got all the meat off it. I got the rib meat and everything. And everybody just says, "Okay, that's boneless." It is not boneless yet, all right? Right here in the fish are pin bones. I just call it the, la the lateral line of pin bones and I just go right on the both sides of it. Right about to the midway spot on the fish here. Go on both sides of it. Cut that strip of bones out. Right there. There you go. Now you have a totally boneless crappie fillet. Alright. I'll throw that in there. Now the walleyes. Alright, you've seen me catch the walleye on that Lindy Rig and Sucker Minnow. I do this walleye the same way as a crappie, but the walleyes are a little bit easier. They don't have that high rib cage. Right down through the tail. And this is about the perfect eating size. This is probably, I don't know, about a 17 incher. You go right down through there. So once again, I'm going right against the top of that rib cage, but this is kind of nice because it gradually ends and I can just skin it out to there. Tip my blade a little bit. Once again, riding right along that rib cage. That way you don't waste any meat. There we go. Perfect. Okay, just do one and that's a that's a male too. Alright. Walleyes are even easier to remove the skin on and crappies. They have a very rough sandpaper like skin that's very tough to to break through or to cut through even I should say. Okay. Um, you know one other thing that I'm I'm gonna recommend that I you know I should do more of is these walleyes when you get them um, if you cut the gills right here and let them swim around the water and bleed out this this meat will become like a bright white color and be you know much better eating i let mine soak usually overnight sometimes but not today we're gonna anyway there it is exact same pin bones i was telling you about right there they you feel with your finger they go all the way back to right about there so once again i'm just going to go right above them right down here 
right back in the corner, right back down the other side. All the pin bones are in there, and now we have a boneless piece of walleye. Now I don't I don't fry the walleye whole like this. Um, I prefer cutting them up into more manageable sized chunks. You know, I should say. At least the, the thicker part anyway. The rib meat I will leave like that. And then usually the, the tail section, I'll cut it right down the middle. Okay, so those are my friable pieces. And my crappie filet. <clears throat> so I'm going to wash these up and uh, we'll get out some breading and I'll show you how it's done. Alright, so we have some canola oil here. And we want that to heat up to 375 degrees. And I have a handy thermometer here to make sure that we uh, get to that temperature before we put any fish in there. So here I have Magic Fry, just buy it at the store. And then here I have this all natural batter mix. And this is a large bag. This is like $7, and this will last me like three months. <clears throat> um, you mix this with cold water though. Um, and I don't I don't make the batter until, like I said, until the oil's about ready. But uh, here's the fish over here. There we go. See the wallies are up, all cut up into smaller pieces. And the crappies, I don't have to because they weren't big fillets. Anyway, uh, next video you'll see is me dropping them in the hot stuff. All right, got my oil heated up to 375. I uh, just submerged a bunch of my fish here. This magic fry. Just going to dip dropper in there. And I have my, my oil is deep here, so like the whole fish gets submerged. And I'm going to cook this for roughly three minutes. All right. I got these crappie fillets. Nice and golden brown, crispy. I always put them on a rack with a paper towel so they can, and no, never let them touch either. If you can, that makes them a little soggy sometimes. The walleye chunks, I leave them in there for just a little bit longer because they're a little thicker. Well, after I pull these fish out, I actually check the oil again. I want to make sure that that oil stays that 350 to 375 range. There we go. Those guys are golden brown. Now these other pieces here, I'm going to dredge in this and drop them in there. Plunk. Plunk. All right. This might look a little, uh, I usually do this with two hands, so I'm running one, one hand with the video, obviously. There's my crappie filet. Walleye chunk. Ooh. Now sometimes these will stick to the bottom of the pan and you just want to take your tongs and put them in there. I usually like to float them. I don't like to just throw them in. But, you know, sometimes that kind of stuff happens. I like to do about four pieces at a time to keep the uh, keep the heat up. So, and once again, they'll cook for about three minutes or so. All right, it's been about three minutes, and these are nice and hard, golden brown. By the way, you know with this batter here that I made, I want to just give you guys a short, a little pointer. Um, I actually add some seasoning salt to the batter because the batter is good itself, but after you eat it a while, you're like, oh, I'm going to try something different. So I actually add season, Johnny's seasoning salt. I have some other seasonings up here you can use too, but anyway, there is the frying magic, and here is just the, the, oh gosh, the batter, the liquid batter mix. Anyway. Um, I'm going to cook a few more of these fish and show you the end product. Alright guys, there it is. 
the end of my catch and cook video <clears throat> got some good old-fashioned mac and cheese to go with it that is the batter on the right and this is the dry rub on the left this is called frying magic and this is just called batter mix um, I'm sure there's different kinds and different stores where you guys are at but this is my favorite nice and crispy Here, let's break a couple of these open for you quick okay hear that crunch that mmm that one there same thing with this nice and white some good stuff anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this catch and cook video of crappie and walleye um, first time I ever done anything like this but I thought you guys would enjoy it <sighs> have a great night